Welcome to Kara's Cures, where we explore the cutting edge of wellness. I'm Kara Sundlin. The holidays are supposed to be the most holly jolly time of the year, but for one in three American adults suffering from depression, it's a lot. Whether it's through loss of a loved one, loss of a job, or loss of a livelihood in the last 19 months, it certainly can feel extremely isolating. And my guest today is Ashley Bernardi. She is a trauma survivor who decided to write the book, Authentic Power, to help people. Welcome, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me today, Kara. You know, it's such an important topic because I think we all have our shoulds thinking, why don't I feel so holly jolly like the Hallmark movies? And I mean, maybe we just need to hear it again. They're all no Hallmark families. But especially right now for people who've had a loss of job or maybe they lost a loved one, this can be a really tough time of year. Oh, absolutely. The holidays can be a really tough time, especially for anyone that's faced with any adversity or if they're feeling depression and anxiety creep up. And they might think, you know what, why don't I feel happy? Why can't I be holly and jolly? And the first thing I want to say is that's okay. It's normal. It's okay if you're not feeling okay. And I can speak to this as a postpartum depression survivor, a trauma survivor. I have been there. And the first thing I want to say is if you are feeling these depressive feelings, like anxious, or even grieving, whatever it may, may be, the first thing I would recommend that you can do is talk to your medical professional about it. This could be a therapist, a psychiatrist, a doctor, but I would recommend that that would be the first courageous step that you can take. And if you're not sure where to start or what to say to that medical professional, write it down, write, writing down your feelings or sometimes the easiest way and give that piece of paper to them. Yeah, okay, and let's just talk about what you went through because as a little girl, uh, you lost your father suddenly at a young age uh, and that, that was your first probably bout with trauma, right? That was absolutely my first um, battle with trauma. When I was 11 years old, I, um, I actually tried to save my dad's life as he suffered from a sudden death heart attack right in front of me, my mom and my sister, and the three of us tried to save his life. I ran out and called 911 and went to get help. My mom and my sister, my sister who was nine years old at the time, administered CPR on him. And it was just an absolute traumatic experience as a child and for a family. And uh, I went for years in years burying that trauma, I did not want to address those feelings of despair, depression, and grief. I didn't even want to acknowledge that my father had passed away. That's normal. I mean, I know a lot of people who, who do that, who bury your de emotions deep within because it's the easy thing to do because these are uncomfortable and messy emotions. But what I found for me personally is that when I bury my emotions, that comes out in other ways that are a detriment to my health and well-being. For me, it looked like an addiction addiction to work, an addiction to alcohol, people pleasing, lack of boundaries, you name it. So it wasn't until another trauma hit me over on my head when I was in my mid early thirties, um, Lyme disease and postpartum depression at the same time, that's where I was forced to get still because I physically could not move my body. All those emotions and trauma from my past became bubbling up again. That's when I addressed them. And I found that when I do allow myself to process these uncomfortable and messy emotions, therein lies the true healing. And talk about that because you, for your book, uh, Authentic Power, you've interviewed 20 healing luminaries. You talked all about grief, uh, especially during the holidays. But when you say process emotions, I think some people don't even know what that means. Like, okay, what am I supposed to do? I got to keep going on. What do you mean by doing that? Yes. Oh, that, that's such a great question. I get really excited about. So yes, first of all, I interviewed over 20 uh, healing experts and luminaries from grief therapists to psychologists to ER doctors to spiritual mentors and energy healers all in my book because all of those healing modalities help me learn how to process my emotions. There was definitely no one size fits all approach. And I know everyone's always looking for that ma magic elixir or that magic thing to do. And of course I meditated and I did breath work, but that alone did not help me learn how to process everything. So for me, I actually, in my book, came up with a process to help me go through my own emotions in hopes that it might help others. And I call it the feel framework. It's super easy to remember, F-E-E-L, feel. So first is focus on that emotion. What is that emotion that you're feeling today? It might be uh, uncomfortable or like maybe you are upset at having an uncomfortable conversation at work. Maybe you can't even identify that emotion. That's also okay. Just focus on what it may be and where it's showing up for you in your body. 
So slow down. And this can be done through a meditation. It can be done through a walk. It could sometimes even be done when you're just driving in the car or even sitting still in the car. It can be done anywhere. Next, I want you to enter within that emotion. And this is the part that people get stuck. And this is the part that no one wants to do because it's, it's uncomfortable. Instead of burying that emotion down, you're going to go straight into it. You're going to try to feel that anger or maybe it's that laughter, whatever it may, whatever it may be. What is that emotion you're feeling? Enter it. Then I want you to pause and and ask yourself to experience that emotion. If you're feeling sadness, maybe what comes up for you are tears. Sometimes in grief, laughter might come up. Let your body experience these emotions. It's a very primal part of who we are as human beings to let your body move through these emotions in a safe way. So however that looks, sometimes for me, it was screaming, it was sighing, it was breathing, it could be crying, it could be laughing. And then last is listen, learn, and love that emotion back. I believe all emotions are here to teach us something. They're all here for a reason and we need to get curious about them. So listen to what that emotion is here to tell you and learn from it and love it back. Thank it for being there. Yeah. So you don't mean to wallow and feel awful all the time, but the idea is that when you process it, it, you need to feel it to heal it. So the other side of that is that you're going to feel better. You absolutely feel better. So I'll give you an example. For me, I had um, something pretty uncomfortable happen with one of my daughters a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm feeling fear. I'm feeling anger. And what I did was I got on my yoga mat. And for me, yoga is a great way for help to help me breathe through my emotions. And I just did a little bit of yoga. I did some meditation. I did some breath work. And I found that I ended up crying. And I was like, wow, here comes out these emotions that I was feeling from that conversation with her. And then the next day, I felt so much better. I felt lighter. I felt like I had moved through things. So yes, to your point, it's not about sitting and wallowing and being sad. It's first going to talk to a medical professional, but also teaching yourself healthy ways to move through these emotions. And and I even heard the other day, it's almost like you're observing them like clouds passing through the sky and moving through them as they they pass. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we talk about grief, uh, you know, we uh, we can think of it here at Channel 3, we lost one of our beloved colleagues colleagues and uh, co-workers Denise Desenzo at this time of year when she passed two years ago on December 7th. And I know people think of the people that they've lost. And uh, when you're grieving, you say there's actually some things you can do. You don't just have to skip over the emotion. You can acknowledge the grief, but maybe do something that honors your loved one as a way to feel good at this time of year. Absolutely. And I'm so sorry to hear of the passing of your colleague. I know how hard that is. And I will say this, you know, when my father passed away the first Christmas and the first holiday without him, it was horrible, right? Like I just, and because part of it is I didn't even want to acknowledge that he was gone. My body was still in shock, but now 20 years later, I'm able to talk about him in a way that that helps me continue to have a relationship with him, even in death. And that's what I encourage others to get curious about, like, what can I do to honor this person and to still have a relationship with them? For me, this is what it looks like. My father was an army colonel um, and he passed away active duty and worked, um, you know, in Washington, D.C. at the Pentagon. So this is how I honor him today. I participate in wreaths across America where families get to volunteer to put wreaths on soldiers' grave sites every year. So every year my family and I do this, my kids get involved, they get to see who their grandpa was. We get an opportunity to talk about him and talk about what a hero he was. And then other things like I recently completed the army 10 miler, which is the the most I've ever run in my entire life. And I did it in honor of my dad. And right, I ran around Arlington cemetery. And right afterwards, I went by myself to his gravesite and just sat and talked to him. And I cried, but it was beautiful, happy tears, feeling like he was there with me and that I was able to keep his spirit alive by moving through this army 10 miler in honor of him. That's wonderful, beautiful, and, you know, great ideas out there. Uh, You can make a donation in honor of your loved one, maybe bake their favorite cookies, anything that kind of reminds you. I think that would be a healthier way than being like, I just can't even think of that person, or we're not going to talk about that person, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in the first um, birth, my dad's first birthday without him, we actually went to the beach and he was supposed to turn 50. He passed away when he was 49. So what we did was we got 50 red, white, and blue balloons and we wrote on them. We wrote messages to him and we sent them up to to the sky, to heaven at the beach. And I will remember that memory forever. That's amazing. That's amazing. The other thing is when feelings are intense, which can happen, you say it helps to just remind yourself that it's 
it's only temporary, which is really true from a body level. Feelings can pass in a matter of seconds if we just allow them to pass, right? If we just allow them to pass, usually it takes about, I think science says it takes about 90 seconds, but think of it like a cloud. This, when I was in my deepest and darkest days of depression, one thing I would affirm to myself that I was taught was this is temporary. These feelings are temporary because when you're in those depressive moments, it feels like the fog will never lift. I can totally empathize with that. I have been there. It's like, I am never going to get out of this funk. I'm never going to get out of this depression. But if you flip it and affirm to yourself, and sometimes that's even writing it down or saying it out loud or looking at yourself in the mirror and saying it, this is only temporary, or this feeling is temporary. That provides some hope to help you move through those difficult moments. Yeah, just reaching for that next best feeling thought instead of beating yourself up that you're not feeling the way you want to. Um, and you said you, you created and decorated a coping sheet. I love that idea. What, what does that look like? Yeah, honestly, this coping sheet should be for anyone. If they're like feeling happy or depressed, it doesn't matter. But for me, I actually created this when I was in my de my dark days of postpartum depression where I just wanted little gentle reminders that there were things that I could do to help lift my spirits. So I developed my coping sheet, which is I got a bunch of my kids' markers and a white piece of paper, and I on it, I put Ashley's coping sheet. And then in different colors, I would write things that I love to do and um, just to remind me that there were things that I could do to be grateful for, but also that to help lift my spirit. So for me, it was maybe singing or lighting a candle, doing yoga, listening to classical music, watching a ballet, putting my feet in nature. And I would write all those things. I probably had 20 different things on the sheet and I put it right on my refrigerator. Like the one place I knew I was always going to go every single day was to go eat. And so I would put it right there and I'd say, oh, what a great reminder. So as you're passing through your kitchen, you see you know what, I'm going to light a candle today. Or you know what, I'm going to take some time to meditate because sometimes we need those reminders to get into those healthy habits. Yeah, okay. And you encourage people to be vulnerable. I think at this time of year, you know, we do, how are you? Happy holidays. Oh, everything's good. And um, the strength really is being vulnerable. Maybe not to everybody that you're passing on the street, but you want, sure. people, to, you want, you want people to be honest and reach out to a loved one and let them know what you're going through. Yeah, I, I will say this. When I, um, I I went through my first part of postpartum depression and Lyme disease alone and isolated because I didn't want anyone to know what I was going through or feeling. But what I found was that when I reached out, I first reached out to a small group of friends from high school that I'm still close with and I, an email just to tell them like, hey guys, heads up, this is what's happening with me. I'm, you know, it's very open, vulnerable for me to share this, but I think I need to tell you what's going on. I, for whatever reason, I have to get it off my chest. And I was met with so much love and compassion. And here's what I learned. People want to help other people. At you know, the very bottom line, people are good. And when you reach out and tell someone how you're truly feeling, that you will get help. And I was met with love and compassion and phone calls and home visits and text messages and meals and flowers and just overwhelmed with so much love that helped carry me through those dark days. Just by taking that one step, I will say I know how hard it is to talk to people about how you're really feeling, especially when we have things like social media, painting a really pretty picture of everybody's lives, right? Yes. That's the hard part. But what I found is that you can get vulnerable with people that you love and trust in a very safe way. And I assure you, in, in these cases, you'll be met with love and compassion and support. Yeah. And something else you can do, because sometimes we just need to do something. <laughs> it's hard for us to be. That's something a lot of us are working on. But if you really need to do something, there's the power of breath work, um, which actually oh. will calm your whole system down. If we're in fight or flight, we're going to feel things in a different way than once we've calmed down. Yeah. Uh, so just even you always have your breath with you. It's free. Specifically, how did you learn how to do that? And how can people use that as something when they really have to do something? Oh my gosh, the power of breath work. Okay, I'm just going to be honest. I used to live in a fight or flight state, 100%, you know, especially after going through trauma, I was on alert everywhere. I thought I was going to lose the next person, the next person. So my body was just constantly stressed. I found breath work while I was going through postpartum depression and Lyme disease by a friend who introduced it to me. And I found about like just the power of the breath, the power of sometimes just putting your hand on your heart 
getting still and taking 10 deep breaths can scientifically calm your nervous system. So for me, often throughout the day, if I find myself getting worked up or nervous or anxious about something, I pause, I step away from my computer and I take those 10 deep breaths. There are so many amazing tools and, um, and things out there that can help teach you. For me, particularly, I did uh, the art. I went through the art of living and they teach what, um, what they call the sky breath work. It's amazing, but truly there's so many out there. And at the end of the day, it's just a reminder that all you need to do is take 10 deep breaths. It's simple. Put your hand on your heart, put your hand on your belly, put your hands next to you, close your eyes. It doesn't take long. It's literally 30 seconds and 90 seconds to help you pass that uncomfortable emotion through. And there's so much power in it that we forget about. Yeah, and I know you're a mom. I mean, these are coping skills that don't we wish we all learned when we were young. Um, have you yes. found that it's, uh, easy is going to be the wrong word, but how are you teaching this to your young ones if you are? Yes, absolutely I am. I'm actually being the example to them. And I invite them to meditate with me if they want. And some days, you know, they're little, they're kids. They're like, no, but they see me doing it. And I will never forget the one day that like I took them to the beach and two of the little ones went and they just started meditating <laughs> on the beach without me prompting them. So I know that by leading by example, they are watching and they're listening. And I do have my older one. I've invited her to do longer meditations with me and breath work and getting out in nature. And we talk about my book and we talk about our feelings. So I think just by being that example and giving my kids a safe space to explore what healing modalities work for them is hopefully going to help set them up for the future. Yeah, they say that's the best part, right? If we can watch the adults around us process emotions and uh, something that maybe a lot of us weren't raised with and the uh, old, old parenting of suck it up. So... <laughs> Yeah, that, uh, yes, absolutely. You know, I was raised as a military child. So yeah. I was told that I was a colonel's daughter. I had to be strong, you know, and that's one of the, that actually came to my detriment because I thought after my dad died, I needed to be so strong because I was a colonel's daughter and I had to wear that mask of strength for years and years and years. But that was like Oscar worthy acting. If you're going to ask me, that was not really how I was feeling inside. So, you know, I want to encourage my children that if you're not feeling strong, it's okay to not feel strong. I want you to feel everything that you're feeling and do it in a safe way. And I'm going to support you always and love you for that. Yeah. Yeah. So easy acronym feel. And we want to let everyone know, I think we've got a picture of the cover of your book. It's uh, the, uh, it's called authentic power. Give yourself permission to feel it's a beautiful cover there. And Ashley, where can people find this? Thank you. You can find it at all the major bookstores on Amazon and also visiting my website, Ashley, A-S-H-L-E-Y, Bernardi, B-E-R-N-A-R-D-I.com. AshleyBernardi.com. Ashley, thank you so much for being on Kara's Cures today. Thank you, Kara. Great to be here. Yeah, and for all the viewers who are watching, if you want more content on the cutting edge of wellness, you can find more Kara's Cures on the WFSB streaming news app. I also post them on social media. You can follow me there at Kara Sundlin. Have a great day.